I always begin with squares, said Louis Kahn. A quick review of the floors of his most well-known buildings would suffice to confirm this observation. From the baths of the Jewish Community Center in Trenton to the Bangladesh National Assembly, occasionally the entire building is square, but more often the project is conceived as a cluster of squares. The Fisher House is the simplest expression of Khan's idea. Two cubes, one for the living room and the other for the bedrooms which touch at an angle as if by chance, like dice thrown onto a table. In reality, they are not perfect cubes and the cube of the living room is not even a square in floor, but they are close enough to be perceived as such. Hey guys, what's up? My name is Steven and today I want to show you the process of making this image of the Fisher house, but most importantly, I want to show you what my feel for the Fisher House is. I've never been to it, but how I interpret it, how I analyze it, and a little bit of info about it if you have never even heard of it. And I wanna thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So the first 1,000 people to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. So without further ado, let's start. The Fisher House, also known as the Norman Fisher House, was designed by the architect Louis Kahn and built for Dr. Norman Fisher and his wife Doris, a landscape designer, in 1967 in Hatboro, Pennsylvania. Characterized by its dual cubic volumes, stone foundation, and detailed cypress cladding, the Fisher House stands as a clear statement of how Kahn was working at the time and how his work differed from that of his contemporaries. Now without further ado, let's start into our tutorial. And as always, we are going to start with the 3D model that was downloaded from the 3D warehouse in SketchUp. It was overall a very good model, but the only thing that I didn't like was the terrain. So I, with the sandbox tool, I created a grid of one meter by one meter and started deforming this terrain just so it would look much more imperfect because, you know, everything is imperfect. Like, and the nature is imperfect and it's not you know, plain in, in, in anywhere. It always has its imperfections. I opened Lumion and I imported the, the model that we had to the moment and I started ba changing the basic materials, which was the wood of the facade, the glass of the facade as well, the stone and the grass. Those were the basic, basic materials that we needed to change for the, for the image. And before we do anything, before you do anything, you have to change, you have to set your perspective because if you you know create your the best 3d model ever but you don't set your perspective you can lose a lot of work and it can be very sad very sad um, I also imported the image overlay so I could have a different style of image like we have been doing it in our last tutorials I activated the orthographic mode and the Sun I knew I wanted a sunset kind of image um, so I started to you know put the Sun in a, like in, in a certain place I import the shadows the skylights the hyperlights you know all of those things that you know that make your image much 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 better i went back to the terrain because it wasn't convincing because now that you have a set point of view that you have more or less uh, an idea of what you want your final image to look like you have to start modifying the terrain the the, one, the terrain that appears in the foreground most of all just so it, it looks best and your image your like the building overall is framed in the best way so i started you know lifting some parts of the the foreground terrain and changing the material so in, in the end i had three different grass types of three different wild grass types that would look make it look much more interesting and now to the fun part which was adding trees adding trees is always so fun i don't know about you but i love adding trees this would be like my main job in lumion if i you know would work just you know to define the trees that we were going to add in this new version of lumion so i just added you know trees for the shadows background trees um that were going to be seen i always went back to reference images because i knew that like if I if I saw a lot of pictures, I knew more or less the feel that you get when you're going to the Fisher House. I've never been there, but I you know I got an idea of all the pictures of all the renders that have been done, and I tried to get this fine detail vegetation that you, that you can get in Lumion, and tried to get it in the foreground so you can get uh, some very nice tree trunks that uh, would look very detailed. And I also imported some uh, trees for the background, trees like different kinds of trees from pine trees, also the willow trees. I also also changed the camera millimeter length it was in 15 millimeters this that is the default that Lumion always has it in but I recommend you always change change it to 35 25 to 35 is the most like realistic solution and you know obviously add different scales of trees from you know large 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 trees that are 
twice or, or three times the size to small shrubs you know try to add a, a lot of variation to all of the vegetation and as you guys can see we had a lot of trees but we don't have any in the foreground that can give depth to, to the image so i added this one tree one this one pine tree that you can only see the trunk but with that pine tree you could just uh understand the depth of the image and like the like the, the whole the whole idea so i forgot to add and the reflection effect so i added it later again and then you can add the reflection not only to glass but but also to wood and, and steel like and the majority of materials all of, uh, like everything around us has reflection so you always want to add this into your, your 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 lumion model and also i started testing out with real skies because i knew i wanted this sunset look but i also like i'm, I'm a big fan of this sunset post rain look where you know you know it has rained like 30 minutes before but the sun is coming out like kind of like a new hope or something i don't know this is just kind of like in my head or something but i started playing with this with the real skies and with the color correction to make it look like a, a cold image i w it wasn't very defined yet as you guys can see if you've known anything about me from all the videos is that i'm a very explorative person a very explorative guy so i don't have like a, a defined route from the start that I'm going to do this and this is the way it's going to be done. That's what I do in all my, my images. No, and like it's very different and continuing with our, with our video, I started defining the foreground of the image and it's very, it's very interesting to find out that obviously you have inside of forest, you have different types of foreground. So there's the foreground that has a lot of tree trunks, like a lot of uh, debris on it then there's a tree then, then there's a forest that has a lot of uh, shrubs a lot of tall grass and i thought that was the most interesting one for this image so i started to add a lot of ferns that would just kind of like erase the whole grass and just uh, make it like uh, a, a, a place that was very untouched or very like a low maintenance place i also added some curtains because curtains give just a home quality like a home feel to any building so it may, if maybe someone doesn't know that this is a house that this is a fisher house then um you know adding some curtains adding some familiar items will make it look much much more familiar and at the end i just added some lights which if i had dimmed the brightness of the sun a little bit more it would have uh, looked a little bit better it would have been a little bit, a little bit more relevant but at the end uh, i had the sky, the, the sky too bright and they weren't that emphasized as i thought they would be so i rendered the image with all the channels as you guys can can all can always see and that was it that was it we now we were going to go on to photoshop and before we go into photoshop i want to talk very very quick about our sponsor of this video Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. You can learn literally anything in Skillshare, from illustration, graphic design, animation, all over to productivity hacks and photography. It is curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads, and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. And it's less than $10 a month month with an annual subscription and one class that i'm interested in taking is 3d illustrations creating asymmetric designs in adobe illustrator by dkng studios and this looks very very interesting in this class that i would normally take because it has uh, a way of creating 3d without actual you know normal typical 3d architect programs and the overall result that all the students have is very interesting so this is one class that i would totally totally recommend you guys take and look in skillshare the first 1000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get free trial of premium membership so you can get explore your creativity now in Photoshop, I imported all the channels with the base image. The first thing I did was crop the the black bars that I had on the side from the image overlay. I cropped them with a with a C tool with a crop bar with a crop option. I also overlaid the specular channel. I put this in soft light, I think, so just so it can make all these specular parts a little bit more shiny. And also with a depth map, I inverted it inverted it with using Control I and made it look a little bit like fog, so it can give a little bit of contrast and obviously much more depth to the image i went back to the i also added a 3d lut that the ones that we had used last time and i also went to the camera raw filter to just start 
seeing and tweaking you know what we could do at the end you know this image was looking too blue and it was very weird to understand it so i tried to make it make it more to the warm tones and as soon as i was starting to explore in this i knew like it was very interesting to see how the vegetation like how all the ferns were kind of different and they had a different tones of red of yellow and green so i tried to play with all of these tones and i also tried to give a little bit more depth even you know with by playing by putting some ferns in, in a tree trunk that was in the foreground making it much more darker and by doing this you just it just gives you a lot of depth to the image and it just uh you know makes your eye travel in the best way possible from the tree trunk to the all the ferns place and then at the, at the end to the, the, the actual building and that was how the image was was done so, so if we start seeing like the test that we did this was the first rendered i i rendered like each time I did like an upgrade, I tried to take a render out. So this was the first render where we had nothing but just the base materials. As you guys can see, the terrain is also like the base terrain. It doesn't look good as either. Then I put the orthographic mode on. Then finally, I, defi I defined um, the sun direction, which was more or less like the, the real sun direction that you have in Pennsylvania where the house is. Then I added, you know, some different material adjustments of the like of the base of the stone then i added the grass you guys can see this this different terrain just makes it make it make it look much more much more uh realistic like you know it, like if it was in a real place then the trees that that um, just drop the shadow on the facade just make it look so much interesting and make the facade like everything look much more interesting like the wood look interesting then we add much more trees then uh, we changed the like the millimeter length like this was in 15 millimeters and this one's in 35 so as you guys can see this is just, is just more close like closer to a real photograph than this one obviously you know you can't you do take photographs with even 10 millimeters uh, cameras but this one just makes it look much more real closer to the human eye this is what maybe that this is what i mean so i started adding much more trees and this just makes it look much more interesting but as you guys can see the reflection in the glass is not perfect yet then if you guys see this next image it's a little bit more blue because we had you know some fog and the real skies changed but also you guys can see that the the whole glass just looks much more realistic the, the whole um reflections look much more realistic and if we zoom in it just looks very nice it looks a little bit renderish but it looks very nice and as you guys can see from here to here you can see that uh the perspective was changed a little bit it was like zoomed out a little bit and it was a little bit more warm as well then with the vegetation in the front as you guys can see here it doesn't look that promising here i really didn't like how it looked uh over here this is like the final render that we image the, the final image that we rendered in um in lumion but at the end the result that we had was was this image which you know i really really liked if we zoom in we can see that it's it has a very illustration vibe to it it also it also has like a, some of that noise that you you want to see in like these illustration type of images and then you can also see the curtains that we have the wood on the places and some like green type of light that is very typical of, of these kind of light landscapes so i really really like this end result a lot so what did you guys think this was the final image i had a lot of fun as always um it was, it was kind of tricky for me because you know these famous buildings already have the set view the set the set point of view that most of us know the building from so maybe if we actually go to the house and visit it we can find other points of view that photographers maybe won't show us but i'm thinking like this is like the most uh, typical view that you would see the fisher house in and you would recognize it's the fisher house yeah so that was it uh thank you guys for watching remember to like and subscribe to the channel if you guys are liking these type of videos comment down below what type of videos you would like to see and nothing thank you thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next video all right bye